Hey everybody, welcome back. I haven't done a video in a while, so I figured I would do a couple of wine kits, and this one here, the first one I'm going to be starting with is the Wine Expert Selection Amarone Kit. And the second kit I'm going to be doing is the Fontana Trio, American Trio. But this video will be about the Amarone Kit that I've mentioned here. Um, there's going to be two separate series running side by side roughly around the same time so you know a lot of fun stuff for you guys to see coming up on my uh, channel all right all right but let's look at some of the other ones i'm making i got my peach wine over there that i'm making and this is my wine expert eclipse barolo but we're going to get started with the selection amarone kit Looking inside the kit, we can see all the ingredients that include a uh, plastic bag with things like yeast and clarifiers and oak sawdust and so, so forth. But, you know, this particular kit has, in addition to the bag of grape concentrate on the bottom, in addition to that, also comes with a couple of packages of sugar and a grape pack that we're going to be putting in the um, mesh bag that's included in the kit. So before we get started we're going to clean everything and get ready. Alright so before we get started let's just get everything clean and make sure everything that touches the wine is clean and this is a quick little part of this video that'll go over some of those things if you know that already you might just want to fast forward till we get to the part with the wine bucket all right so before we get started we're going to want to clean everything exceptionally well i like this be bright cleanser it's pretty much what i use almost exclusively and it works to me i believe excellent it's very similar to oxyclean Anything that touches the wine needs to be thoroughly cleaned, so we're going to need a long-handled spoon for this step. Our primary fermenter, which is basically a food-safe plastic bucket um, that is big enough to hold our wine, so it has to be over six gallons, so there's seven point, I think, eight gallons. And make sure I clean every single piece of this, including the lid and the underside, and make sure anything that touches the wine is immaculately clean. Technically, for primary fermentation, you don't need to snap the lid on, but I do anyway, because I don't want any fruit flies or anything like that getting into the wine. So I also am going to be using an airlock, so I'm going to clean that out as well. And this is one pictured, and they come in multiple types. We're going to also need to uh, clean our um, hydrometer, because we're going to need to take readings of what our starting specific gravity is in the winemaking process. If your um, primary fermenter is equipped with a spigot, you want to make sure it is shut off completely uh, so that when you start mixing things up, you don't have wine spilling out all over your floor. Now, if you're just starting out and don't have any equipment whatsoever, it might make sense to get a winemaking equipment kit. This is stuff that you would buy once and use over and over again. And it would have many of the things that you would need uh, for your home wine making hobby. Might make sense. A clean and sanitized spoon and I'm going to be ready to rock and roll in a second. So one of the first things I need is there is a bag in there called betonite. And I'm going to rip the top off and I'm going to add this betonite to the, to the uh, warm water I have in there. And I'm going to stir it while I'm, t I'm pouring this just a little by little. And I'm going to stir it in there. I'm not just dumping the whole thing in because you'll have a lump of clay at the bottom. So that's basically what I'm doing, exactly what you see me doing here. doing that I have the top of this box 
and I'm going to show you the technique I use for that. There's tools that do this sort of stuff. I'm going to show you my special patented impending technique. It's called get a pliers. Put it on there, you can rip the top right off very easily of the concentrate. Basically, the wine expert kits, what's really nice about them is you can rip the top of the box off like that and um, be able to easily pour that. So, position this again to take my concentrate and carefully pour it in. Now, on this particular pail, this line here is a six gallon mark. So what I'm going to do I'm going to take out my bag of concentrate, fill that up with a little bit of water, swish it around and pour it in until I get to that six gallon mark. All right. So I'm just pouring that in. And I'm going to do a little bit more. And what I'm going to do next is stir this up really, really well. Now this particular kit comes with three bags of this oak. So I'm going to be adding it, but I'm only going to be adding two of the three bags. And the reason for that is I don't like a lot of oak flavor in my wine. Now what this does, you might be asking why are you putting oak in wine? Well, since I'm not using a barrel, which is typically made of oak, I am simulating that with oak dust. stir that oak dust in. Hungarian oak dust that has a toast on it. So I put two of the three bags in. Okay. Now, the next step is for me to clean and sanitize this bag and in it I'm going to be cutting the corner off of this bag of the grape skins and putting them in there and tying a knot. So I'll be right back when that's done. Alright, so that you guys can see, I poured the grape skins in the bag after I cleaned it and I put it in a pot, um, a spaghetti pot or whatever, and um, I just draped that over the edge, put the grape skins in, and I'm going to tie a knot in the bag to put into the whole. Uh, what they call must, you know, or grape juice, okay? So we'll be right back. Alrighty, folks. Now, the wine kits that come with the grape skins cost more because they have grape skins, but it really makes a nicer quality wine. So this is what I would consider a more higher end kit or more of what I uh, would say a premium kit would be. And after I put that in, just going to do a little bit more stirring. Tied a nice knot on the top. Take my spoon out. I'm going to be taking a specific gravity reading on this.
which I get someplace around like 1.080. You know, which you might say is a little bit low, right? But we're going to be adding sugar packets later to bring up the specific gravity. All right, so we got that going. The next thing we're going to need to do is put in the yeast. Okay. RC212 comes with this kit. And you just sprinkle it on top, just like that. You don't stir it. Finally, you take your clean and sanitized cover, or what I do. I snap it on and I'm going to be putting an airlock on that and I'm going to put that aside now for about seven days. The directions say after seven days we're going to be adding that other sugar. Um, these two bags of dextrose. So we're going to be adding that in about seven days. So for now we're just going to let this thing go and we'll be adding that in a little bit. Um, the other things that this kit has... Whoa! There was actually two things of yeast in here. Okay. Um, I did not see that one. So, what am I going to do? Say, Prince, wake up. I'm going to take the second one. Easily remedied. Pour that one in, too. Snap that on. Alright. And I'm going to be putting another airlock on that. And typically what I like to do is all the stuff that comes with the wine kit, including the instructions, I keep with the wine kit. So I'm going to have these two things, a dextrose and that stuff. I'm going to be putting this in a Ziploc a little bit later. But um, let me get the airlock and I'll be right back. Alright, so I put the airlock on, and what I should see in a couple of days, what the airlock has in it is some water. I actually put a little bit too much water in here. So let me take that out a little bit. Out. So there's my airlock. I'll put that on there. And what I should see is some bubbles coming up in this airlock. Um, within the next two days or so to start to see some fermentation starting. Alright, so I'm going to put that aside and again we'll probably revisit this in about a week to put in the extra sugar. Alright, take care. Alright folks, this is what you should be seeing in the airlock within a day or two. You see that? That means we have fermentation. What's happening is the um, sugars in the grape juice is being um, converted by the yeast as the yeast consumes it into alcohol and into um, CO2. And you're seeing the CO2 now it needs some place to go. So it's exiting through the, uh, through the airlock. You might see also at the bottom that um, some of the grape juice itself sometimes comes up. You know, so what you do basically is after um, if that all gets full up with wine, you're going to want to clean it all out. 
I'm going to let that go a little bit and see that the uh, see that it doesn't get out of hand. I'm going to keep monitoring it because that happens sometimes when this tub might be just a little bit too full um, or if the um, fermentation is very active. All right. So yeah, this looks like it's pretty active, but I'm going to let that go a little bit and just monitor it and make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is just uh, cleaning that out if it gets to that point. Um, and just refilling it with water, cleaning it really thoroughly, refilling it with water, putting it back. Okay. Over here, you can see my peach wine still going. And uh, there we have it. All right, thanks for watching. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And um, definitely check out my blogs, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com, with the dashes in the middle, or um, my other one on winemaking, how to make homemade wine.biz. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and have an awesome day.